And so a new stable coin has been released and it's currently available to trade. And you can use it to convert it into another cryptocurrency, one that bloody moves. That new coin is called Bitcoin. This thing hasn't gone nowhere, man. What's the story? We've had a wild stock market. S&P and NASDAQ were trading negative for the day, minus, well, what was it? Minus 1.25% to still managing to recover ever so slightly, but volume is higher than normal. You got bad news regarding the Eurozone, and they've kind of said that might not actually reduce the interest rates just yet. Just wait for Powell to say the same thing about the US, believe me. Because if the US comes out and it doesn't have a problem with inflation when this month it showed that it did, then the United States economy genuinely is a monster and they ain't stopping it. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. I hope you're all well this evening. I'm going to keep this life short and sweet. Nothing much has happened other than good old Kathy has sold Bitcoin to buy Bitcoin ETF. It's one of the main names stepping up now. Remember, the authorized participants, we won't know who's buying or selling. We know they are authorized to get involved in the ETF, but we're going to dive into this article talking about Kathy and how she's got rid of the Bitcoin derivative to effectively exchange it for the Bitcoin ETF. So we're going to dive into that very shortly. Firstly, we're going to go into some altcoins because I did promise you guys that I'd go through some altcoins. We'll go into a little bit of Bitcoin and then I'll finalize the live right there because this weather outside in the UK is rough. Minus six degrees is what they're tipping for tonight. And I've been in and out of the house and I've been in the hot house, warm house, stepping outside, drying up my throat, man. Anyways. Let's get with the flavor, ladies and gentlemen. Let's get this thing sorted out and break it all down. Good evening. What is good, guys? How are we all this evening? Yes, keep it. Just keep it short. Bitcoin rejected off the daily open. We go into 35K. There it is, ladies and gentlemen. I know minus six is nothing, bro. I understand it's nothing. If you live in Finland or Sweden or you're in the, in, in the top ends of the Alps, I can't be messing with that kind of weather, man. That's not me. And then again, I can't even stand the heat. So I need to find a place in the world where the temperature is just normal. That's it. I'm not interested in this hot weather or this cold weather. I just want it to be normal. I want it to be the 50 EMA. If there was a country that was called the 50, <laughs> the 50 EMA. <laughs> Anyways. Oh, here we go. Minus 25. My days, man. Anyways, let's get with the flavor, ladies and gentlemen. Well, look. Bitcoin. Now, again, this is a lot of retail traders are feeling a little bit cheesed off right now. Why isn't it going up? Why is it not going down? Lots of flavors coming into the chart and our bids right here are starting to just get a little bit tricky. If you remember earlier on, we had at 39,000, 20 million orders. Okay, order amount, excuse me, 20 million. It's now been reduced to 13. It's like they're kind of pulling off, all right? That is a pull on the bids. That's it's not good. It can be good, but at the same token, it could mean that Bitcoin could be coming up, but at the same time, you've got guys pulling off the sales. That's not good either. So it seems like everything's just flatline, okay? Going into th putting things into perspective, we're going to look at some on-chain analytics regarding Bitcoin, mainly trading data and on-chain analytics, just to get us to understand where we are with regards to Bitcoin right now. Because when Bitcoin does nothing, we don't get nothing. And then we go into the Asian session tonight, and then Bitcoin pulls the dirtiest number known to man. It's usually the case. Well, if I decide to press the button that I've got, then yeah, probably Bitcoin's going to make that move. So let's just put things into perspective first. Jamie, Mr. Jamie Dimon has agreed that there are genuine use cases for Bitcoin. Money laundering, fraudulent behavior, extortion, blackmail. Those were the use cases this guy came out and said, and he's sick and tired of talking about it. Now, nah, well, he, he's cheesed off, right? 
that <laughs> Larry Fink is making bank on the back of this because Larry Fink is a businessman. You'd think Jamie's a business businessman, but he's he's old before his time kind of thing. So he's with the old boys. He doesn't even like the volatility of Bitcoin. He doesn't even like Bitcoin. But JP Morgan is heavily invested in blockchain technology. So you're kind of perplexed in some ways, trying to think, <clears throat> excuse me, what's Jamie's story all about? I'm losing my voice. <clears throat> now, <clears throat> has anyone got a cough sweet? <clears throat> Let me start again. Kathy, have you not noticed in all of her pictures, she's, she's pulling the same face? Either that or I'm just pulling up the same image all the time when I'm searching for it, but she's always pulling that same face. Those porcelain teeth are always out and that lip's just going, she's just always doing the same pose. Do something else. Anyways, Kathy has now gotten rid of her position, as it says here. She's got rid of the 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 derivative uh, as it goes into it right here. Where does she say? <clears throat> <clears throat> she sells off sixteen million dollars worth of a position that's futures backed. Remember last night what we said about the CME data. Okay, you see here, commercial is less than non-commercial. Okay, and when you see that, it's because they are usually hedging themselves. Right. So what she's done is she's effectively got rid of that position. And that would be the ProShares Bitcoin BitTo Bit, ETF in principle. OK. And she's now going to make a purchase of 365,000 shares of the ARK 21 shares Bitcoin ETF. OK. Which only makes up 1% of the ARK fund. All right. Is that good news? Well, yeah, of course it is, because it's, this is the first. It's the first one that's come out and said, look, man, we're getting involved in this bad boy. Only makes up 1% of it, but never mind. She's getting out there and she's picking things up. We go over to the actual ETF itself and have a look. And what we got? <clears throat> Don't really have much. All right. Still trading lower. I personally believe that next week we are probably going to see some interesting behavior on the ETF. Remember, ETF closes tomorrow. Okay, sorry, Friday, it finishes. That means Bitcoin has free roam to do whatever it wants. So if Bitcoin's price is going to get aggressively manipulated, and for example, it comes down over the weekends and it comes down aggressively over the weekends, you can probably bet that this ETF come Monday is going to probably start working its way back up because then the logic would be that Bitcoin has dropped down and they've managed to buy Bitcoin cheaper. And then they're going to be transacting it to put it back into the trust to effectively get it into the ETF or make it as an ETF. OK. So don't get too worried about, you know, the fact that it's going down. We, we were anticipating this to go down. All right. Because it's the first pretty much the first trading week per se. And look, we've got gaps already in the chart where we're naturally expecting them to come back up. And we've got another vector candle right here. I think that's great. We're starting to see vectors. We don't even have a 50 EMA. We've got a 5 EMA and a 13 EMA. All right. No 200 EMA. So we don't really know what's going to happen next. We can only assume. And this is it. Right. You can't use Bitcoin's price to dictate what's this going to do right now. All right. Because Bitcoin's going to go up and down. It's about what price do they buy it at? And if Bitcoin goes down, we could actually see this. OK, if Bitcoin goes down aggressively and they start buying it up and it holds, then they're going to rush over to the ETF and get it converted. The ETF naturally is going to go up. Then we're going to see Bitcoin not really moving higher. Do you see what I mean? So, for example, here is Bitcoin's price. It comes all the way down, okay? And that's going in the weekend. Then at the weekend, it starts to stabilize like so, okay? And inside this area here, they've been buying up the Bitcoin, all right? Then come 4 p.m. on a Monday, at 1 p.m. on a Monday, you know, they, they, buy in, they buy the ETF or the Bitcoin at certain times for each authorized participant like BlackRock and JP Morgan. They do it at different times, all right? So they then take that Bitcoin and then they effectively go to the ETF, get it converted, <clears throat> and then they buy the Bitcoin ETF. That would naturally lead it up. You're going to see lots of gapping plays, all right? That's what could happen. Then Bitcoin's price could effectively start climbing back up from that point. I think it's going to happen in here first, 
than in here. Why? Because there's more market cap in here than there is in here. When we start seeing the same market cap near there or thereabouts, then or a relatively decent market cap, then we're going to see some interesting plays. Remember, all of the cryptocurrency ETFs that are out there right now equate to around $56 billion. That's nothing, okay? Given the, the exposure that they've been getting, not much liquidity has come into play with those ETFs. If this ETF by itself can garner a lot of interest, already having $4 billion worth of trading volume, if we can get into the 10 billion mark, then we're laughing because then that's going to pretty much take, it's got more than 10% of the all the ETFs collectively. So that's really important that we understand that, okay? Now, <clears throat> go back into Bitcoin's price. Very tricky day today. It's come all the way back down. And if you remember earlier on in the live stream, we were talking about this level here with Bitcoin. If you remember, we were going on about the 42,072, uh, 47. 42,047, which would take us inside of this area right here. Now, Bitcoin actually made its way down to 42,199 before it reversed. But remember, they had opened up from the value area low. They swept the liquidity lower and then they initiated the reversal back up. So if you look here, can you see how they've got a thousand contracts? 1.5, 1.1. They didn't go beyond the 42,199. That's good news, okay? Now, when you're trading the idea of the depth of market and you're witnessing this, take into consideration what's going on. Look at how much the contracts are, okay? Because if value is going to hold its place, they're going to try and keep it where there is a happy medium of near or near about the same amount of orders, as you go further down into here, you don't see any thousands. It's just 200s, 300s, 500s, all right? And that's where price can get really, really crazy because they're trying to find value. Who's going to be loading up at a specific price point, all right? Effectively, this is what it would be doing. It'd be going like this, up, down, up, down, up, down, until it finds itself a situation where someone's going to be putting in bids to mark it up higher. And that's when you start seeing price slowing down. And then it does this choppiness and then slowly starts to climb back up and do this flavor because they've managed to get the interest from traders on the profile to effectively mark price back up. And they did that at the 42,199. We didn't get the 4247, but we said here that this was the area that we would naturally anticipate them to try and reverse from. Granted, it was the value area low, and they did give us that reversal right there. So they've shifted all the way back up towards the 50 EMA. Again, what's the story? Above the 42,000 zone, are they building the shorts? Are they building the longs below the 33, 43,000? We're not going to know until we see a significant break of Bitcoin outside of these ranges, okay? Now, let's just go over and have a look at a couple of on-chain analytics on Bitcoin. So what have we got? Yesterday, we saw that there was quite a significant amount of people withdrawing from their wallets. In other words, effectively looking for an exchange to take liquidity, okay, to sell their Bitcoin in principle, all right? Now, this metric here is the Bitcoin wallet inflow outflow. Inflow means we're putting money into our wallets. We make the assumption it's hard wallets. Outflow is means we're taking our money out and going and putting it into exchange, okay, to seek liquidity. Now, what we've got here, we have got 1,006 Bitcoin inflow at 42,479, We've got effectively 827, we've got 1,018, and then we've got <clears throat> 1,055, all right? Now, the problem is, is you've got here 2.45, you've then got 776, and then you've got 2.57, all right? Then you've got this 2.24. Now, granted, you've got this area here, which shows 1.68, and then you've got 1.88. Frankly, it doesn't equate to what this bad boy is doing. And that's a little bit of a cause for concern. If we see people loading up their wallets with Bitcoin, we need to see at least the next day or so to actually even out this area of people trying to sell their Bitcoin by principle. All right. If we keep on seeing this drop in terms of people withdrawing from their wallets, then that means they're seeking liquidity, which then can add weight to Bitcoin's price coming down. Now, people are throwing out the idea that Bitcoin's going to go to 35, 32, 31, 29. I even saw 19 um, somewhere. But I was like, okay, not a problem. That just means it's cheaper. You know, <clears throat> that's the truth. Um, hi, Tito. Can you get some popcorn, beer, popcorn and beer to enjoy 
the live stream. Greetings from Italy. Thank you very much, my man. Thank you very much. Wasabi, what's good? What's good, ladies and gentlemen? Like the damn live, Fatino. You on... <laughs> nah, it's all good. Everybody does like the live. Don't worry. They will. They will. All right, then. So... Looking at the high block, just to understand where we are. Earlier on, we saw this liquidity here at 41,100. Let's see if retail is actually getting a little bit frustrated, right? They are. They are getting frustrated. Look at the concentration of orders here. It's not as bright as what it was just a minute ago. And that was taken during the live stream today. So we know that there are some people now taking money off the table. It's getting very quiet in cryptocurrency. People haven't got the patience. People don't want the exposure. They don't know if it's going to go up or down, all right? Now, remember, we've got a logic that we are in a cyclical play, okay? We've got the idea that this is an M formation, drop retrace level one. We've got that logic. So we're naturally anticipating a drop to the downside with Bitcoin. We're waiting for the level to confirm itself. How long is a different story, ladies and gentlemen, okay? You may have heard me talk about this before. I was in a trade on dollar yen quite some time ago. And I was trading the logic of cycles, all right? So I had a W formation, rise up, retrace level one, rise up, retrace level two, rise, retrace level three. So it was a Sunday going into the Monday and we had a level one, okay? I was expecting this logic to come into play where you had a rise up, retrace level one. And then I'd expect another move up higher. Cool. Guess what? I had sat in a trade for two weeks because dollar yen did not break out of a level. It just kept trading sideways. It didn't do nothing. It was dead. Then it decides to make the move. Of course, I closed my trade before the move. Come on. You sit two weeks waiting for it. You're waiting for a level to break. And that's what can happen. Okay. Now, granted, Bitcoin could effectively do the same thing. It's very unlikely Bitcoin's going to trade sideways for the next two weeks. I mean, it could trade sideways for the next two weeks. Granted that we've only got this range from here. Logic says that, you know, we've, we've, we're stuck in this range. It's had a little bit of volatility up and it's now brought it back down again. So we are still technically in a range. All right. The last time we were in such a tight range, ladies and gentlemen, just go to five hour just to make life easier. Um, you could. Uh, well, you've got this right here. You've got this range. Look at that horrible range in Bitcoin. So top side, it was 15th of August and it broke out 22nd of October. So that, that is rough, you know, but that's something that can happen. All right. So you've got to really take that into consideration. Now we've got the same logic coming into play right now where you've got Bitcoin trading sideways and it doesn't seem to want to break down just yet. I am of the belief Bitcoin's going down. All right. The problem that I've got is, is... Will they do this first? <clears throat> Will they recover the imbalance? Okay. Because I believe that if they do decide to sweep Bitcoin higher, it's going to be a fast move to take out the liquidity to only reverse it back down again. All right. The same thing that they did here. Where is it? <clears throat> Look at this. See this drop red vector? Well, quite frankly, they actually came up to this red vector sooner rather than later. All right. But the idea is that the move up, or sorry, this, this red vector candle here, okay, they've recovered it. This was before the ETF. But if this red vector candle is going to get recovered, I would expect them to sweep up to it first to come back into it, similar to what they're doing here in principle. You see this move up, move up, come down, happy days. So just imagine, ignore this area here on the chart. All right. I mean, let me make it easier to show you what I mean. Um, here we go. Perfect example. Perfect. Here we are. Look at this. So this is where we are in principle right now with Bitcoin on the daily. OK, this area right here is not moving up. It's not moving down. I'm expecting them to sweep up to take the liquidity back to only rip it back down again. This is what I'm looking for with Bitcoin. Now, the only way that that's going to be a valid assumption, ladies and gentlemen, is if Bitcoin does manage to get above the 50 EMA cloud at the top side. Earlier on today, I said to you guys to watch out for the 50 EMA at 42,150 and the next point at 40,808, roughly there or thereabouts, okay? 
So if Bitcoin can surpass this point at 43,500, then there is probably a promise of it going up into this imbalance because this imbalance is bloody huge. If we go into the sell orders, you can see just at the top, look, you've got commitment up here, 15 million at 52,184, but that's not an area where Bitcoin has been just yet. So 48,800, you've got 10 million right there, and then you've got 5 million here, and then we've got another area at 13.98 million. So looking at this chart now, we can clearly see that there is more commitment on the bid side than there is on the offer, all right? So that could be explaining why Bitcoin isn't moving up. Have a look at our dearly beloved book map. What have we got? We zoom out. Now that bids are coming in, it just showed a plus 16, plus 17%. That means that bids are being hit. That means limit buys are being taken. That means prices are going down. And look at what's going on. Starting to break away from the VWAP itself. Now, the logic says that if we do have this commitment down below, then the logic is that we would anticipate them to come and fill this place. All right? Now, look, we've got a lot of bids. Oops. Seeing some movement now. Okay, nice little ball, little, little move there. No. Is that? Oh, okay. I thought I saw the good old ignition algo where you see zigzag orders. And that's effectively the algorithm trying to push price to a certain area. It's crazy. Go check it out. It's called ignition algo on the CME. It's in their T's and C's on what the algorithms can and can't do. All right, go check it out. So... <clears throat> 41,800 is a lot of commitment down there on Bitcoin, all right? Even if Bitcoin does drop down away from this VWAP and sweeps this area, logic says we would anticipate them to start marking price up because this is the relationship with the bid and the ask, all right? Imagine you have got yourself. This is really important to understand because then when you look at the candlestick, you're then going to say to yourself, hmm, is that what's been going on? Yeah? So imagine you've got the bid right here and you've got the ask right here. There's numbers all over the place. All right. The idea is that if they've been bidding price down and price has been dropping, OK, drop, 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 drop. It's going down. It's going down. It's going down. Everyone's losing their shit because Bitcoin's going down. What's going on is bid orders are coming into play. So they're holding price and taking up all the orders. So they're buying it, buying it, buying it, buying it. Once they finish their buying, in principle, you're going to see a sharp move from the lows. They'll try and come back into the range again just to make sure that it was a genuine move. And if it was, then they'll consolidate and then they'll start working their way back up. The same way these guys who have been bidding price to the downside are now going to look to offer it out to the, to the, to basically to, to the ask. Okay. So they're going to say, all right, does anyone look, sell to me? Sell to me. I'll take your order. Take my order. Take my order because he's going to look to offer it higher. And that's where you're going to see price going up slowly but surely and ending up recovering previous zones. So the concept of the hybrid system is that we've just had a shoe bag of guys going long on the bids, passively picking up orders to the downside. Now this stability or this stabilization of Bitcoin could be the, mo the moment in the chart where we're getting ready to see them lifting up the ask to sell into that, okay? To get people to sell, all right? and encourage people to buy. Because if they've been buying as it's been dropping, they need it to go up. That means that they need people to come in and buy it. So we need an aggressive move up to encourage traders to go long so that the guys who have been bidding price to the downside, buying it as it goes lower, are effectively selling it as it's doing what? Going higher, all right? So you get these instances where the candlesticks or the hybrid system gives you that clue as to what could happen later. Now, again, if Bitcoin, if they're, if they're not interested in this zone, they can just simply sweep it. They don't have to come back to the vectors, but they will come back to the vector. All right? It's all about timing. If they know that they can get a repeat of this and get more bids to the downside, that means they can get Bitcoin cheaper. They will break Bitcoin down and they will sweep the 50 EMA and they will go way beyond into the 40K range where it's consistent with orders of bidders stepping in and trying to hold price, which you can see right here. 39,000, 39, you've got 13.9 million orders at that point. Any questions, ladies and gentlemen? Okay, here we go. All right, crazy, I saw you type this and I forgot to mention it. I didn't, I didn't even mention it, so please forgive me. All right, crazy said yesterday, and he's saying it several times. So here we go. First, we recover the imbalance and push to 50K, 
52k, then slight sideways consolidation. After that, we get a big retrace. Okay. Hmm. Okay. Let's have a look. Let's look at your logic crazy. First, we get a retrace. First, we get a move back up, recover the imbalance. All right. And then we go to 52K. All right, then. So let's just consider the following, right? Bitcoin right now, okay, is up 1.19% for the quarter. All right. Yesterday, it was 2%. Now, it's still positive for the quarter. Okay, cool. So, right, let's go back now into the chart. So it's up 1.19%. Your belief is it's going to go higher from this point to 52 that will take Bitcoin up and it will be up 23% from this price point. Is that something that Bitcoin can achieve? Well, of course it is. <laughs> it was up 100% in 2021. It was up 56% at the end of the quarter of 2023. Okay. So it's not numbers that we effectively can't see. All right. Go to 50, 52, and then pull back down again. All right. So when you've got that logic in your mind, I'm, I'm, I'm meeting you halfway by saying, yeah, they'll recover the imbalance right here, okay? The biggest news in cryptocurrency was right here. That was the ETF being approved. What a waste of time, right? The biggest news was right there, and it turned out to be sell the news event. Well, they said it would be, and it ended up being. Was I fooled? Yeah, I was. Because I've never experienced a Bitcoin ETF before. And given all of the pumps to the upside, you know, you would have got on the idea that maybe this could actually encourage things. But then it would start to make sense. Like, how are they going to uh, accumulate the crypto? How are they going to get the Bitcoin ETF? They need to buy the Bitcoin. So you're saying to me, Bitcoin has dropped from this high at 49,000 and now it's sat at the 42,000 and that's enough of a discount to start buying the Bitcoin ETF. Now you sat there thinking, hmm, we've got a halving coming up. I mean, if Bitcoin continues up from this point, happy days, a halving comes into play, we get a halving at 50,000. What a cool thing. That means it's not going to be too much of a slap. All right. My my logic is we need Bitcoin to drop. It has to drop down just so it sits in line with what these authorized participants are doing. All right. We know that they're buying and selling Bitcoin behind closed doors. And this spot price right here, <laughs> I personally don't think they're going to be buying it at these prices, man. I don't think. I think they're going to want it lower. That's my logic. That's not me being bearish. It just means it's being cheaper. Bearish is not bad. It's cheaper. Remember that. Don't give me shit because I say Bitcoin might be coming down. Come on. That's how I know you're not on the same mindset. Bitcoin's cheaper. We encourage cheaper Bitcoin. Granted, you might have a bag that you want to increase in value. I get all of that. But then we can flip it on its back and be like, well, you know, you now can buy a little bit more because it's a little bit cheaper. Please, ladies and gentlemen. I do not want the worst for Bitcoin. The ultimate discount would be 8K. Now, that would be a nice time for Bitcoin. Think about it. It would be because it's cheap as chips. Would they allow it to go that far? Well, we've got other guys talking about 10K Bitcoin, 12K, 15K. And then we've got the guys that are saying that they will never happen. Look, man. <laughs> Banks with much greater, larger, much larger market cap than cryptocurrency have collapsed. Don't think Bitcoin's any different. Because when someone is pushed and they have to free up liquidity, they will do the business. They really will. That's not me scaring you. That's me giving you the straight facts of life. You know, two emotions operate in this game, fear and greed. And there's nothing else in between. It might sleep for a couple of hours, but it's fear and greed. That's it. All right, um, cool. Um, time will tell. I see that. All right, and ladies and gentlemen, so um, altcoins. Let's get with the altcoin flavor because I did promise you today. So what's been going on? Nothing. 
BNB has been taking the top spot so far, so good in the last two and a half minutes. Okay, BNB has been making the flavor. Let's just quickly go over to BNB and have a look at what's going on there. All right, and then correlate that. So BNB is pulling back down again. I really want that 380 BNB. That's what I'm looking for, 378. But they're consolidating, so that's good news. We could be getting ready for that altcoin flavor, ladies and gentlemen. Going into Ethereum, you can see it's starting to do its flavor right here, okay? We've got the USDT chart right there, so it looks like it could be on a promise to work its way up towards this red vector at 5.93% because of the back of the dollar is still going up, all right? But we do have an imbalance down below here that we need to be very, very cautious of, which then leads me over to a list of altcoins for you guys. So first things first, we're going to have a look at what the open interest is on several altcoins. Mav has come in with a lot of interest right now. And then I'm going to have a look at your altcoins in the chat, guys. So look at that bad boy. Mav has made a nice little move to the upside, seeked beyond its range daily high. Um, so, yeah, sorry, yeah, it's actually going to... No. Oh, that was from the previous session. Forgive me. The fast move away from the psychological range. And it's trading really well for the day. Granted, Bitcoin's been coming down and this bad boy is doing really well. All right, we're just going to... The higher, higher time frames, go to the daily, just have a look at where we are with this coin. Look at that. Nice recovery of the wick is on its way. That'll be a nice thing. Two dollars might take a little while, but look, that is a perfect climb. A nice accumulation coming into play. That's beautiful, man. Look at that. It's literally, this coin is smiling at you. <laughs> yeah? <laughs> he's smiling at you. Let's see if he's going to go for the hairdo. And go towards the top side of this range right here. At least minimum 1.6 if it does continue. But just remember, it's gonna it's showing that flavor of a rise, retrace, rise, retrace, rise, retrace. All right? So just be very mindful of that, ladies and gentlemen. Let's have a look. Big dump on Bitcoin. No, nah, ain't no dump on Bitcoin. Come on. Don't, don't, don't say that, right? Let's have a look at ADA for a second. <clears throat> All right, then. Cardano, what we got? See, now Ada's looking like it wants to... Ah, okay then, cool. Here is that zone. We marked it off last night for the gentleman, okay? So, yes, the, yes, here we go. So there it is. So you had this these block ranges right here, and this is where they last sold off from in principle. Uh, what we were talking about last night, if I'm correct, is this is where we would anticipate them to try and run longs on this violet vector candle region right here on the higher time frames. And what, here's something that a question was asked by the guys, one of the guys in the platinum chat about the block ranges themselves. We wanted to know if the red vector, when does price break a block? Okay, so when you've got a block, what do you use? Do you use the higher time frame that you see the vector on or the smaller time frame? What is it? Well, if you've got a one hour time frame and you're trading off the one hour, then you make your decision off the one hour. When you jump to a smaller time frame, you will always see a vector candle. For example, look, you can see right here, every time they break into this range, which is this zone right here, there is a vector candle. It's not no phenomena. Look at it. Vector candle break right there. Vector candle break right there. Vector candle zone right there. Vector candle, vector candle. And then you've got a vector candle zone here, vector candle zone there. And I keep on going and you've got a vector candle break right there. Why is it breaking there? Why is it not beforehand? Why is it not above it? Like it's always at that point because this is a point where they previously had transacted. So the market has a good price memory gain. Okay. Now, when we go back into this example right here, the idea is that this is on the five minute time frame. If I go into the higher time frames and look at the hourly, I can then say to myself, well, where are the vectors breaking down? All right. So I'm not seeing them with the exception of this red vector right here. All right. Now, if you took the logic of it breaking down on this vector candle on this one hour time frame, you'd be waiting for the candlestick to close because you'd be waiting to see if it could break down beyond this point to start running shorts on the break of this range. But because it's the one hour time frame, you would naturally be waiting for the next candle and you'll see straight away the next candle spike back up. So you'd be waiting. But what if you went down onto the smaller time frames and made the decision off the five minute time frame, even though you were trading it off the one hour? All right. You've got one, two, three breaks there, four breaks right there. So you'd be running your shorts right now. Then you'd get hammered. OK, you've got to make sure. And this goes to everything, not just regarding this, this form, this, this range stuff that we're talking about. It's important that when you're taking a certain trade on a specific time frame, your strategy has to 
has to align with it, all right? There are guys that only look at the one minute time frame, nothing else. They're not even interested in the dailies. They're not interested in the weekly. They don't even have time for the weekly. The day, a, a, a person that trades off the one minute time frame, okay, and he's exclusively a scalper, if he were to go to the weekly chart, that's like pulling up a chart for the last century, okay? It's way too much data for him. He's not interested in it. He's only interested in small fire moves. Naturally, yesterday's high, yesterday's low. They are important areas, and you really want to be watching how price behaves at those specific points. But it's too much information. But he has to make his decisions off the one-minute time frame. Again, if you're trading, you're waiting, and you're taking trades off the 15-minute time frame, don't go to the one-minute time frame and then have a completely different trading approach. Make sure that whatever you're doing on the one-minute time frame is reflecting your bigger picture move on the 15-minute time frame. OK, because you can swap. You can be like, oh, you know, what? I'm going to try and take a little bit of a long because it, even though the 50 minute time frame is coming down, I'm going to try and take a long to see if price can go back up again. And then before you know it, <laughs> you're trying to take a long and price continues to go down. You're scratching your head thinking, why did I mess up? Well, the bigger picture on your 50 minute time frame said it was going down. So always make sure that you stick into one time frame that you're executing off. All right. Cool. Next. What else we got? Um, <clears throat> Algo, let's have a look at Algo. Well, actually, I didn't even do ADA, but ADA here, you can see that it's breaking down. It's re retraced away to the 50 EMA on the on the five minute time frame. Well, that's the 200 EMA, but it's the 50 minute time frame, 50 EMA. You can see that right there. Where is it? Here we go. So drop, retrace, 50 EMA, drop back down again. The st the fact that the vector hasn't closed down below is a good sign, but it's consistent with them sweeping liquidity. Look, there's no clear, strong closes of the candlesticks, all right? You've got this one here. 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 And each time I see these wicks, there's a good chance they're going to come back into them, all right? Where have we seen that before, ladies and gentlemen? Yeah, yeah. There's, there's a bit of a problem with it. 41,726. Bitcoin has a wick all the way down there. Go to the one hour time frame. Bitcoin has a, just a wild amount of wicks inside of this range. So effectively what I'm saying is they could be in the mood to start sweeping liquidity lower. Remember, the bids are currently coming in. There's more bids at the blows than there are offers at the top side of the move. Okay, take that into consideration. What else we got? Um, have a look at BMX. BMX TT. All right, then. That bad boy is coming down now. Okay, then. So look, historically, this bad boy, every time it pumps, it's going down. And anyone that looks at an altcoin and thinks, oh my God, I missed out on it. Historically, you, you know the asset when you just look at how it behaves. Look, it's easy for you to identify how an asset moves. Makes a nice move up, it comes down. Makes a nice move up, it comes down. All right? Now, this is not TA. This is understanding the asset that you're trading. How does it move? So if you go back in time and all, and look, okay, so that's as much time we've got. 14th of November, it's a new coin. They did it in the first bloody couple of weeks of it. Where was it? Yeah, the first few weeks, couple of days of trading, right? They did the same thing. They marked it up, they came down. They marked it up, they came down. Mark up, they came down. So historically, you've got the information about the altcoin telling you that anytime it marks up, there's always going to be an aggressive move down. What are you looking for? You're looking for climatic candles. What's a climatic candle? Climatic candle is when you start seeing people buying this coin. How do you see that? Huge green vectors. All right. Blue vectors usually appear at the top side of the move. Okay. If you are new to the channel and you haven't done so, go on the hybrid system on the Traders Reality website and check out the free course on there. It's tradersreality.com. Just go check out the free course and it will show you exactly what I'm talking about with regards to these indicators. And you can download it free of charge. You just go to the info section and then you can download the indicator right here, trading view. OK, and then, of course, when you're done with that and you've joined the discord, you go over to the courses section and then you take advantage of the free course right here. Get involved with that bad boy right there. OK, now, with that being said, we go back into this idea and we get the interest that this coin is going to be doing the same thing, all right? It's going down now. And notice you've got three. One, two, three, okay? It's going to come down to the psychological range before it decides to do another thing, all right? Cool. What else have we got? Um, <clears throat> Matic, yes, let's have a look at Matic. All right, so Matic, ugh, Matic is breaking down, ladies and gentlemen. Let's just quickly go and have a look at Matic on the order flow right here. Have a look at where the bids and the offers are coming into play. All right, then. So we have got all oh my days. 
767,000. It's quite a lot for Matic. Mm -hmm. 300, 500. Yeah. Quite a lot of bids. Hardly anyone is offering. 1.34 on the offer. Of course they're going to be offering that much. I don't think they're going to be getting any of these orders anytime soon. Oh, my God. 666 at one. <laughs> Anyways. Oh, my God. Let me just have a look at Solana. Sorry. <clears throat> Solana right there. Okay, so Solana is... Oh, my days. Oh, my days. Oh, that is rough. That is rough. All right, then. Naturally, there's always going to be orders with Solana and any other asset that you see, all right? But what we've got to do is we've got to dive into it and look closely just to identify where we could actually expect price to end up. Excuse me. So we had some sell orders get triggered here at 380. They actually transacted 1% uh, more, all right? We've just had these bids come into play, 214,000. We narrowly missed 131,000, but they only transacted at 19, so 14% of it. But before we go into this big pool of liquidity, we've got 3.2 million. That's a big order there. 3.2 million at $98.75, all right? Going in the offers, you can see that they've been offering it out like crazy, and they've been sitting those orders nicely, and they're starting to lose a little bit of steam. 2.2, 2.16, 102, 430, 2.16, 102 again, sorry. Yeah, so it looks like that the, the bids are going to be purposely bidding down just to get their orders filled, all right? Because we've got a big order right here. Where was it? That 3 million on the, off, on the bid side. That's going to make things make sense for us. Yeah, so, <clears throat> yeah, that's, that's the idea. That is the idea. Okay, then, cool. Yeah, it's very choppy. Solana is very, very choppy, man. Very, very choppy, okay? H-bar. About time this thing's going down. Anyway, what else have we got? Um, <clears throat> you've got some brown eggs. Oil. Um, <clears throat> so I've got lots of drawings on oil, all right? But <laughs> they did it today. Look at that flavor right there. Let's just go and have a look at that bad boy. Let me just go into, I think, oil today. Did a nice little price projection on oil, if knowledge serves me correctly. Let me pull that up for you. Oh, my God. That is not nice. That is not nice. Okay, then. So where is my oil? <clears throat> Here she is. So the idea was that we were expecting the red vectors to come into play at this point, and we were waiting for a V-shaped play with oil, okay? And oil is, is a wonderful asset to trade if you are patient with it because you're really trading vector to vector. Marcus, I hope you took advantage of this, man, because there it is right there. V-shaped play, perfect. Retrace, consolidate, blue vector candle right there. I do believe I mentioned this. On the post, here we go. Oil traders, we are currently creating a V-shaped play. By the time the New York opens and starts trading, we should be expecting a recovery of the red vectors. Be mindful, oil can correct as deep as the blue vector at 69.80, okay? We go and have a look. Look at how close they got, 70.50. And they were, the blue vector was all the way down here as well. So they got pretty close towards it and then they've instantly reversed from that point, all right? So that was a nice little flavorsome move right there. But with oil, you've got to be careful with it. Again, you want to be paying attention to the dollar, all right? And dollar itself is starting to pull back ever so slightly. It's appreciated by 3%. And tomorrow, ladies and gentlemen, we are going into the good old unemployment claims where the madness will unfold. So I'd be expecting dollar to be coming down to see everything else come back up because there's going to be profit taking right now. They can buy more euros right now off the back of a strong dollar, transact on that, sell into it, make it go higher. But then, of course, we've got this problem here with the UK inflation puncture interest rate cut hopes. That means it's going to be the same thing for the United States. That means the stock market is going to get slapped. That means we've got to be very careful with our positioning, ladies and gentlemen. That means we need to end the live. 
Mad love and respect, ladies and gentlemen. I hope you've enjoyed tonight. I'm trying to keep it short and sweet. Again, 45 minutes. Please forgive me for keeping you tonight, but I'll be checking in with you all tomorrow. All right? Mad love and respect, guys. Take care of yourselves. Peace. Peace. <clears throat>